Welcome back to Sailing Sea Drew McClyde. In this one, I leave Wyndham Bay behind after waiting out some gales that never came and continue down to Cleveland Passage, into Frederickstown, and to Petersburg where I finish up my solo portion of the trip. While out fishing, I snag a large skate on the nose and then on the way into Petersburg encounter a surprising amount of ice. I wrap this episode up with some reflections on my solo journey and the impacts it's had on my life. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the episode. Good morning from Wyndham Bay. I'm just making myself some breakfast. It's still overcast with really light showers, um, but it seems like it's starting to dry out. And there's a little bit of a breeze coming um, from the south through the bay, which is in encouraging. So I'm going to pack up, get the dinghy back on the davits, and head off uh, towards probably Cleveland Passage today. All right, I'm underway. It's uh, pretty choppy out here, but the wind's not too strong. I think I am going to chuck a reef in though, because it looks like it could be a bit stronger out there. Um, and I'm sticking with my mantra of while I'm soloing, I'm reefing early. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Lots of streaks of this floating seaweed. Still not really getting the weather forecast here. Oh, it started coming through, but hopefully I'll get in a little bit here. I'm pretty happy I can hide out right here, though, while the hydro vein does all the work. It's cold out. Yeah, making ground. It's uh, it's tacking, so it's uh, clawing them, clawing each my way for each mile. Um, it's a lot of hard work, but the hydro vein sure makes things a lot easier. Once I'm done tacking, it, it steers the rest of the way, and I just uh, keep an eye on things, keep an eye for logs, though they aren't really around here. The winds have become a, a lot more steady, and they're a little weaker now, which is nice. They're probably steady at around 10, 10 to 12 or 13 knots. So, perfect full sail weather. I'm cruising along at 5.2 knots and making a pretty good angle. My next one's going to be really nice. I'll be aiming straight for my destination of uh, Cleveland Passage. Cleveland's another 13 miles. So that seems pretty reasonable. It's around noon, I think, right now. Yeah, it's 11.22 right now. So I got lots of time. I'm just coming up on a spot called the Five Fingers, which is basically at the very bottom of Stevens Passage, where Stevens Passage and Frederickstown meet. I can see out to, out to Baranoff Island and Chatham Strait in the distance, about 40 miles ahead. And I'm now about 40 miles from Petersburg, so I had 110 miles to do in total, and I got 40 miles left to do in like, I think I have like five or six days I could do it if I chose to, but I'll just do it in two days. So nice, chill days. There's one of the five fingers there, looking back towards where I came from, you know, uh, Windham Bay, it's uh, Hobart Bay there, and Port Houghton in there. Alright, so I'm scoring some outrageously positive angles. I think there's some current in my favor, and also the forecast that I think I caught for Frederick Sound was that it was supposed to turn southwest. Uh, later today and perhaps that's what it's starting to do and it's pointing me right where I want to go at a pretty nice clip Going along at five knots even though the wind got quite a lot lighter So I'll be in the anchor pretty quick here within the hour if this holds up There's these wild cool warps in the wind that have helped me out a lot in the current I'm just coming up to Cleveland Passage straight up ahead here. My angle has improved wildly I'm pointing right into it, but almost there, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm feeling sleepy, looking forward to a little nap and uh, a bit of a chill out. All right, I'm trying to sail up into Cleveland Passage here. I expect it to be right on my nose as I get into the passage, so we will see in a minute. I'm on tack number four of this little channel. 
Uh, I think the tacks are about five minutes long, and I think I have like half a mile to go until it looks like the wind dies. But the wind's been nice and steady in here, surprisingly so. I think I'm on my last tack. The wind is getting set to die just ahead of me here, but I think the current started helping me. Um, and it's just beautiful and peaceful up out here, so I'm looking forward to dropping sails and setting the anchor. Whoa, what's this bright thing outside? Oh, the sun's coming out a little bit. Um, I guess it hasn't been that many days, it's been like three days, but it sure is nice to see the sun when it's been a few days um, up here in Southeast Alaska, where sometimes it can rain and rain and rain and rain. It's a very nice evening here at um, Cleveland uh, Passage. Just a few other boats still here, just those two sailboats. And a bit of blue sky to the south here. And a good forecast for tomorrow. It's supposed to be uh, southeast 10 knots. So hopefully it is 10 knots and not zero to five knots. But I'll, I'll carry on towards um, a place called Reed Island or Portage Bay, one or the other. Good morning from Sea Dream Clyde. It's a peaceful, beautiful morning here in Cleveland Passage. There's a humpback whale uh, swimming around in the anchorage. It got really close to the boat next to me. Uh, hasn't come right to me yet. But I'm just getting set to go. It's about 9 a.m. Uh, the current should be my favor until I get to Cape Fanshawe. And then as around the corner, it'll be against me for a little bit, but then it'll turn in my favor. Um, winds are southeast, about 10 knots um, at the adjacent weather station, and it's probably blowing about five, seven knots kind of in, in the anchorage here. It's quite cool out today, kind of uh, like overcast, and just a bit of a cool, quite a cool breeze. So I'm making myself some tea um, for as I get going to keep myself warm. I think it might be coming way, my way. I think I see its footprints right there. Those little clear spots right there. I think that's where the whale is. And uh, I think it's right here. Very cool, you can <clears throat> see those little marks in the water right there. That's where it was, the pressure from its tail swimming uh, got to the surface and then it did its, did its little lunge right there. Beauty, flat water sailing. This is right out of the gate. I only just boarded for about 10 minutes or something or less, about a mile or so. Just get out of this little skinny spot that had some shoals coming out of it. Should just have to do a couple tacks to get around Cape Fanshawe up ahead here on my left. And then I'll be into Frederickstown and on my way towards Portage Bay or Reed. Uh, Reed Island, one or the other, I think. Well, it turns out the wind angle is perfect right out of uh, Fanshawe Bay in South Passage here. Um, I'm pointing right at uh, Cape Fanshawe and I should, I'll should i certainly be able to do it on one single tack. And this is just brilliant. I'm going, yeah, six knots right now um, at just a perfect angle. And, and it's just, yeah, everything's just perfect, really. Um, not healed over too hard, it's just the perfect amount of wind and the perfect amount of sail up right now. Here's the uh, six knot uh, sizzle. I haven't heard it for a little while. Every time uh, Sea Dream Clyde sort of settles into that six knot range, there's a sizzle of foam going by and, and uh, I don't know if I'd hit it more than for a few minutes earlier on the first part, or second part of this trip here since I left Juno. Just heading past Cape Fanshawe now. Looks like there's some more kayakers on the beach there. Looks like a really nice little spot for pulling up on a kayaker dinghy. So this is an amusing tack. You can see quite clearly there was certainly current against me as I came, came around Cape Fanshawe, but I've been on the same tack since I put the sails up over in Fanshawe Bay. Just this big arch right now that was initially from the wind spilling out of Frederickstown over that um, point there and then now the current changing and, and sending me this way. So eventually I'll have to tack and I'll head back across the strait. 
So I've literally not touched the steering wheel or hydrovane in an hour now. Um, it's basically since I passed Cape uh, Fanshawe, I set it up and just left it. Still tacking along here in Frederick Sound. Um, the wind has come up just a little bit more, so I reefed and brought in a little bit of uh, the Genoa. I was finding the Genoa was getting a bit of a handful to um, pull in on the winch, so I usually count that as the time when it's about time to reef it um, when I'm close home. Um, and this area, in my past experience in Frederickstown, um, can be pretty wily with the wind coming out of the mountains. Um, so I figured it's better to reef earlier than later. And still cruising along at a fine pace. I'm going four and a half, five knots. Maybe I could use a little more sail, but I'm fine with the way it is for now. Wind finally died. I was still drifting with the current at a knot and a half, but I'll uh, I'll take getting into anchor in 10 minutes instead of an hour. <laughs> um, so yeah, just motoring in the last little tiny bit here to the other side of this island. I did not expect to see this around here. Big old chunk of ice from the Leconte Glacier. Some 40 hour, 40 miles away. Reminds you to watch out around here. I've just set anchor and it held okay. I didn't really crank hard on it because it was getting kind of close to shore. But the tide's gonna drop a bunch and then go back up. And it's super calm. It's supposed to stay calm until tomorrow morning, which I'm probably gonna leave. But uh, there's the fellow that was um, in Cleveland Passage as well. I saw him putzing this way um, throughout the day while I was tacking. <laughs> um, and annoyingly, there's crab pots right where right I wanted to anchor. And same within the pre other nook and another nook. Right every time, like right in the depths where we want to anchor, um, there seems to be crab pots. I made it work right here. I found about 50 feet or 60 feet. The tide's gonna drop 10 more, so 50 feet. Um, and it's just fine. It's beautiful here. I'm gonna fish a little bit and I'll probably take the dinghy out for a little cruise and go check out some of the beaches on the other side of this island and have a look. It looks really pretty. So I just uh, noticed something kind of cool um, right where my, my beer is. There's a little notch in the ice that it's melted into. And that's a big chunk of ice I got in Tracy Arm. It's still huge, just barely melted yet. Everything's staying, everything's staying really good and cold. So I'm just out on the dinghy, looking around, doing a little bit of fishing. I went and say, said hi to my uh, neighbor on the west sail. His name was Steve. He's relatively new to the boat and uh, was having a bit of problems with his roller furling, but we were able to figure it out together. And now it looks like he'll be able to use it, which is awesome. I always love to see other boats sailing. So I thought I had a halibut on the line, but it's actually a big skate. And I'm just contemplating how to get it off. It's been towing me around for a little while here. what I was hoping for dinner. Just gotta to try to figure out how to get the hook off of his face without hurting me or it more. It's pretty big. It's definitely towing me around. Anyways, I can't hold the camera at the same time here, so I'm gonna figure this out. It's gone by the nose. Poor thing. I'm gonna try and figure out how to get this off. I think I'll just tire him out and then just on one hook, fortunately. Okay, I am happy to report that I was easily able to get the hook off of his nose. Um, he just was really gentle when he came up. I think I tired him out enough and I was able to just flip it upside down and it came right off. So, yay! I'm gonna try for halibut now. Good morning. It was a bit of a blustery night. There was sort of, I think, kind of willy wah conditions where there'd be big gusts for a while and this chop would show up and then it would just go calm and then it would come back and go back and forth. Um, and it's pretty calm now. There's just a little easterly breeze blowing um, coming over from Frederick Sound on the other side of this island. But I had a pleasant night last night, went fishing, um, and then I met some more of the folks that showed up. 
um, went and hung out on their boat for a little bit, then invited them over to see Drew McClyde, and we hung out and had some drinks and chit-chatted. Um, really interesting folks. They were sailing a, a J-35 up to Juneau. They were try they're trying to get to Valdez, but um, the weather in the Gulf has been really suspect, and they're not sure if they'll make it this year with it. Uh, it's pretty turned into a really calm morning. It's about 9 o'clock, and I'm just thinking about uh, pulling up the anchor and getting going here. Um, there's a little wind around, so I think uh, around the corner there will be a, a good enough breeze. And then I'll head to probably Thomas Bay, maybe Petersburg. I haven't decided yet. The joy of solo sailing. You do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. I'm underway out of uh, Reed Island Anchorage. Oh, and there's a humpback whale. Well. My escort's out of the bay, apparently. <laughs> Got the hydrovane doing all the work again. Um, it's nice and steady out here. Um, I'm glad I have the reef in. Probably do without it, but it's a really comfortable ride right now, so I'm just gonna leave it. I'm going five knots right now, so that's fine with me. Um, but I was kind of like sitting here thinking, like, once I get the hydrovane going, it sort of just feels like I'm on a little ferry boat or a bus or something, just sort of chilling. Someone else doing all the driving. I just look around and. All I gotta do is adjust it every now and again, but it's pretty much just doing all the work. So yeah, I'll just chill. Maybe I'll read, have some lunch. Let's do solo, single-handing sailing stuff. Just do whatever I feel like doing when I do it. When I do it. Well, the current or wind or both are kind of messing with me. My tack angle is not very good. We'll see if it corrects itself a little bit as I get away from the shore, but I had to that looks pretty bad. Um, it might be a long day, but the current is supposed to change into my favor in the next hour or so. But around here with these big glaciers um, and a lot of fresh water, sometimes it's not so. So I will find out. The rain is some rain showers starting to show up. So I'm just hiding under the dodger here. Well, hydrovane does the work. Yeah. Well, I got all windy for a minute, and I reefed. You know being prudent and then like not three minutes later the wind just did this so time to shake the reef again this is a reef shaking number three I think now um, yeah it keeps I, I think I remember this happening last time I was sailing through here I remember like taking reefs in and out and even back in the day with the Hank on head sail taking switching sails a couple times too so it is what it is. You do what you gotta do. All right, just like that, after kind of wallowing for a while, I got a uh, reef in and a couple, some, uh, some of the Genoa rolled in as well. Um, it's just got real windy all of a sudden. It's probably the, the 15 knots that were forecast, or maybe more like 20 now. I'm uh, getting closer to the southernmost Tybar Glacier in North America, the Conte Glacier. Um, and there's lots of evidence of it around here. Here's one of the bigger bits of ice I've seen so far, but up ahead I can see some bigger ones too. Good sized chunk of ice. Probably weighs a thousand pounds or something. Remembering that most of it is under the water. And when there's one, you gotta look out and see that there's not any smaller bits near it. I don't see anything around here, but I'll keep a close eye for now. Scary. Ooh. No night sailing around here, I'd say. It's getting uh, pretty gusty around here, and there's lots of ice in the water. Or lots is relative, but there's a bunch of chunks up ahead here I gotta watch out for, and some smaller ones, so. Gonna keep focused on the sailing, not so much on the camera work. Um, but uh, getting pretty close to Petersburg now. I'm getting cell phone reception, so my cell phone's going crazy. Um, but it's gonna be nice to talk to people. It's moments like these where I'm very happy I have a Dodger and a Hydrovane, so I can just hide out here. It's like really thick drizzle, if that's a thing. 
Um, the visibility just got really poor ahead of me. Um, and it just soaks, this stuff just soaks you so fast. Lots of ice around here. That one's a biggie. Quite bigger than my boat. Do one big last tack here and then I'll tack in straight there. Here's, here's Taryn on the uh, phone with her camera and the iceberg. <laughs> Thanks for lending me this. <laughs> Just on my final approach to Petersburg here. It's been a bit of a long day, but uh, it's finishing off right. I'm, I'm under sail. I'm going to be able to sail right to the Narrows and then I'll motor in the last little bit. There's Petersburg up ahead. Bring on the Narrows, the top of it. Just beelining for it. Super fun. There's Sea Dream Go. Well, this solo portion of the trip only ended up being about seven days long. It allowed me a lot of time to reflect and think about the previous years I'd been spending in university, working towards a career that I'm not really sure I want. While I love working in the natural sciences, I've come to realize that even spending three, four days a week in the office is just too much for me. My mind, my soul, my body crave to be outside experiencing new adventures and feeling everything that Mother Earth delivers, be it cold, warm, sun, or dark. I want it all, from storms to sunshine and everything in between. The city is not a place for me, and doing this trip up the coast reawakened a spirit in me that had been sleeping for some time. It's a spirit that thrives on adventure, seeing what's around the corner and up on the top of the hills. And while it may sound morbid to say, I don't want to wait until I'm older to do these things, because what if I don't make it there? I don't want to live a life that's full of regrets. While there's of course compromises when going on long-term sailing adventures, it's something that I know I want to do and really need to do to experience my full potential and happiness. As I approached Petersburg and the civilization that it represents, I felt that I had changed significantly in just those seven days I'd spent alone sailing. While I had a lot to sort out in my mind still, for the first time in many years I felt hopeful for the future and genuinely excited. If you're still listening at this point, thank you. I appreciate all the comments and feedback that I get from folks. I really do enjoy sharing these adventures with you all and I look forward to continuing to do so into the future wherever I end up going. I'm putting the bow of my life into the wind, hoisting those sails, and setting off, embracing everything and anything that may come my way. Thanks for watching and bye for now.